This book of rebellion is drawn from the Quiner Collection, which is a series of 10 scrapbooks at the Wisconsin Historical Society of letters that Edwin Quiner and his daughters clipped from newspapers during the Civil War. What makes this book unique is that it is very Wisconsin based by the men and women who participated in the war. It is really an honor to have my name associated with such powerful writing and such compelling stories, but really this isn't my book. The book really belongs to the soldiers who went to war in the 1860s and to the women who let their husbands go away not knowing if they were going to return. One parting scene we must not fail to chronicle. A husband, a stalwart man, was taking the last leave of his wife. A hasty kiss was exchanged, a warm grasp of the hand, and the soldier, as he was about to turn away, stooped to kiss his child, a little girl of three summers. The child put her arms about the father's neck, clasped them tightly, and sobbed most piteously. She would not let him go, and he was forced to unclasp her hands with his own strong arms and hand her back to her weeping mother, while the big tears rolled down his manly cheeks. Still, he faltered not, but bravely resumed his place in the ranks. Incidents such as this try the reins and test the courage of a man more than facing a storm of lead and iron hail from the ranks of the enemy. Yet we don't know who the soldier was or whether or not he returned from the war. I did not anticipate this being quite such a, a powerful book. Um, I didn't anticipate being so you know, personally affected by so many letters. I am melancholy today and have been so for several days. Ever since Charlie died, I have felt as though I had not a friend left. Charlie was my friend, and a braver or better boy never shouldered a gun or slung a knapsack, always ready to do his duty, kind and pleasant to all, ever ready for fun when fun was the order of the hour. He had won the respect of his officers and the love of his comrades. As our chaplain said at his grave, it does seem as though our truest and best boys were taken from us first. Charlie's parents, God help them in their hour of their sorest trial. Tears come unbidden from my eyes while thinking of the sorrow his death will cause in the far off home of theirs. I cannot help but think that this calamity might have been averted if they had only listened to the dictates of their own hearts and kept their darling boy at home. Bane regrets. Charlie has gone, we trust, to a fairer and better land where sickness and sorrow are unknown. I sometimes wish that a few thousand of our northern and southern demagogues were obliged to decide this war at the sword's point and to the death of every one of them. History is made by people like you and me who have to make choices that their previous life experiences had not prepared them. And it tells us something about us, you know, what, you know, what would we do, you know, do we have that inside of us that would uh, enable us to do what, what so many men and women did during the Civil War.